much better and I will be able to do these things better as time goes on. So this is basically the three levels. Now let's, let's do a, a comparison in a certain topic, for example, books or reading materials. Or let's, let's think what kind of reading materials, materials does a person in this consciousness read. Well, definitely it's very clear. Uh, I don't know. Uh, pornography. Popular culture. Basically cars or well, what, everything that's up to date and just recently released. Normally we see that in this kind of reading materials there's not a lot of truth. Normally they say, well, if you buy this cream you'll lose weight or something. But then you buy it and then it's not true. So we could say that most of this reading material only has something like 10% of truth or 20 or something like that. If we analyze mental intellectual topics, well, this normally includes, I don't know, politics, economy, oh, politics, uh, I don't know, administration, science. Too. So normally, because these topics are so dynamic, really, so hard to, to reach a single truth, well, uh, the, the level of truth available in this kind of reading materials is so, sort of like 50%. That's basically our, the, the standard way of understanding truth these days. I read a book, and then I extract some truth of it, and then I read another book, and then by pieces of 50 percent, I, I gather my own truth. This is how mental intellectual works, basically. It's trying to get the truth from many places and somehow or other mix it and conclude or make our own truth. Okay, so now in the spiritual platform, what kind of books do a spiritual person read? Well, definitely we would, we would say uh, like books like the Bible or the Vedas or any religious book like Koran, etc. These, these books are, are basically scriptures. They're a word of God. So, hmm, it would be a nice discussion to have here, but we could say in terms of truth, these books have 90 or 100 percent. So, we could understand by analyzing at this, these graphs, that a spiritual person has much more quality of knowledge. Maybe this person reads 100 magazines a day, but the quality of his knowledge is very low. So, um, most people also have this kind of approach to reading, I have to filter so much. And the spiritual person just uh, is very aware that there's not, not much time in this life to read so much. So, we rather focus on the, on the best quality knowledge. That's, that's the approach. Let's compare how this level sees each other. For example, someone in material consciousness What's the opinion they have of someone that's mental intellectual? Well, normally a person in here likes to, I don't know, uh, enjoy sex or have some drugs or some things like that. And this person would like to be with the family. So normally a material person would say, well, you're boring to the mental person. And to the spiritual person who only wants to do sadhana or spiritual life, well, this would mean that you're stupid because you want to be praying all day. So this is not very good from this point of view. So <laughs> how, let's take a look how mental intellectual looks at material. Normally this person wants to be with a family, in the country or some kind of politics, 
the material person wants to be sleeping or enjoying in some kind of pleasure. So mental, mental would say that you're wasting your time, basically. It's a waste of time, but what this person is doing is just intoxicating. And, you know. and this person who basically has different values than the mental one, well, the, men the mental person would say, I don't know, I think it would say boring again. It's too boring to be thinking of God all day, or, or to be praying or chanting. So we see a pattern here. These, these levels basically have very different uh, ontology or point of view. So they, they criticize each other differently. The spiritual person uh, from the other side looks at, at the material person like with uh, mercy. He would like to help him. Uh, if we see this life, this kind of life, we could compare it with an animal. Because an animal has no decision on what he chooses. If you put a piece of meat in front of an animal, the animal will have no power to, to say, I won't go. The same with a material person. Some enjoyment is there. It's very hard for them to control themselves. So, because a spiritual person practices self-control, immediately they, will, they would like to teach a person in this consciousness to do it to be self-control, to be in control of your own life, not just like an animal. And the same thing with the person in men mental platform, because a person in mental platform does not know God, really know God, then this person would like to teach him and, and to escape from this kind of pattern of happiness and unhappiness. So if we analyze these things, we see basically how our life, where are we and how our life is between other people. In this society we live today, well, we could say that, I don't know, 90% of the people, 90% live under this consciousness. Under mental, maybe, I don't know, 9%. just rough numbers and under spiritual maybe one percent so normally if we try to do any activity that's uh, going to spiritual we'll see that we're basically alone it's very hard to find people looking for the same things we basically most probably will be just criticized by this kind of people if we try to practice spiritual life then we'll be getting these kind of words, like boring, stupid, waste of time. And, uh, so that's why it's very important to, when one wants to practice spiritual life, to, to find a spiritual master and to be always in good association. Of course, it's not always possible, but that's, that's why. We'd like to meet only these kind of people and not mix with the general mass of people where it's very risky to increase our consciousness. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya